As the Beagle progressed through the Galapagos, from island to island, the crew saw more and more life forms that appeared unique to this archipelago. Even though their unique qualities were clear, these plants and animals still showed signs of similarity to the life forms Darwin had seen in the South American mainland. It was most striking to be surrounded by new birds, new reptiles, new shells, new insects, new plants, and yet by innumerable trifling details of structure, and even by the tones of voice and the plumage of the birds, to have the temperate plains of Patagonia or the hot, dry deserts of northern Chile vividly brought before my eyes. Why, on these small points of land, which within a late geological period must have been covered by the ocean, which are formed of basaltic lava and therefore differ in geological content from the American continent, and which are placed under a peculiar climate, why were they created on American types of organizations? In other words, why did this place that looked so different from South America and had a different climate possess plants and animals that seemed so similar to those found on the American mainland? Could there be a connection? And even though these plants and animals had key differences from similar types of plants and animals on the American mainland, they were also different from one Galapagos island to another. For example, Charles found three types of mockingbird, each unique to its own island habitat. He also found several types of finch, each with their own beak formations. Seeing this gradation and diversity of structure in one small, intimately related group of birds, one might really fancy that from an original paucity of birds in the archipelago, one species had been taken and modified for different ends. The giant tortoises that gave the islands their name also had unique forms that seemed to vary from island to island. The English vice-governor of the Galapagos claimed he could tell which island a tortoise came from just by taking a quick look at its shell. Eventually, the creatures Darwin saw in the Galapagos would become key evidence for the development of his thinking as he looked back upon the variation he saw and wondered how it came to take so many forms, each unique to its own island or habitat. But in the five weeks Charles spent in the Galapagos, the significance of what he saw had not yet dawned on him. Darwin accepted Lyle's explanation that the different life forms of related animals he saw in the Galapagos and elsewhere during the Beagle voyage were signs of God's ability to specially create plants and animals uniquely suited to their own environments. Lamarck's idea that these different forms had transformed themselves over time by using and strengthening key traits in ways that helped them live in their environment did not seem likely to Darwin. And besides, Lamarck's theory that repeated actions, like the giraffe stretching its neck to reach the leaves, did not work when applied to plants, even though plants also showed some of the same types of adaptations evident in animals. As the beagle left the Galapagos in October of 1835, Darwin looked forward to a speedy voyage home and to sorting through the natural treasures he had collected as evidence of the vast splendor of God's creation.